What's up friends, fellow card collectors, card obbies here, and I'm going to go over one last bit of my collection. Uh, we've done all the binders, um, so I just want to show off some of the stuff that I don't have in the binders. This includes some relics and autographs and a couple graded cards, um, as well as some oversized cards that I don't have the pages for to put in the binder. Hopefully I'll pick up some of those pages this year, that way I can get these uh, oversized cards in the binder. Um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and and start taking a look at them. Alright, we're going to start off with some Braves cards here. Um, this is a... Let me get the focus right here. Uh, Andrew Jones, Piece of Action, International uh, Connection. This is a bat card. It looks printed, but that's an actual piece of wood bat. Tiny little sliver of wood bat there Andrew Jones uh, this is from 2001 I believe it's in the small text down there but I think it's 2001 then we got a Brian McCann all-star game jersey from 2010 update BMAC there's the back of it and then we got a world baseball classic Andrew Jones for the Netherlands winning materials SPX there's the back of it. Nice little jersey swatch of Andre Jones, who I think should be in the Hall of Fame just on his defense alone. There's another Andre Jones game use bat. Statistical standouts from Rookies and Stars. This is 2002, I believe. Yeah, 2002. Leaf Rookies and Stars. Statistical standouts. Game use bat. Next up, we got a Sean Newcomb. Autograph from Gypsy Queen. This one is numbered out of 150. Uh, 77 out of 150. Gypsy Queen. Sean Newcomb. Uh, I'm expecting Newcomb to be back in the bullpen next year. Hopefully. Uh, he's tried as a starter and, and failed. I think he looks better as a reliever. Um, he's got the stuff to be a starter. Uh, he stretched out to be a starter. But for some reason, whenever he gets out there to start a game, he has... A lot of issues with control um, but coming out of the bullpen he seems pretty decent here's a clubhouse collection from heritage uh, Freddie Freeman little Jersey card here game used there's the back of it this was pulled um, I don't remember exactly when I pulled that but I remember I was pretty happy when I pulled that to get a PC hit uh, next up we got a 2011 opening day Freddie Freeman rookie card. There's the back of it. Freddie Freeman rookie. I used to have his lineage rookie, but didn't survive the purge. So, moving on, we got a museum collection here. Chris Medlin at a 399. Chris Medlin, pretty solid pitcher for the Braves. Had a Tommy John surgery. This 15. I don't know why it's written on the top loader. I didn't write that. Uh, but he was a pretty solid. Solid pitcher, uh, more of a control pitcher, wasn't really a power pitcher, um, but had some injuries and kind of derailed his career. I think he went to the Royals afterwards. And then finally we got a graded card here. This one came from Mr. Scotty Arrhenia. I can't believe he sent me this card, just a beautiful, beautiful card. SGC graded 9.5 um, from Contenders Optic. I think these came out of the Chronicles boxes. Uh, pink parallel You can see there Ozzy Albies. This one is numbered 7 out of 25 now The serial number is right down here. It's kind of hard to see but there's a full stamp But thank you very much Spidey for sending this my way. It's just an awesome awesome gift from you uh, Really really appreciate it. So that's all the Braves cards um, We got quite a few football cards. I only got one uh, Kane's card that I don't have in the binder and that's this uh, uh, David Njoku and Jimmy Graham. I think I got this off the gun show uh, This one's numbered out of 50 28 out of 50 uh, Ricky idols and Joku and Jimmy Graham both tight ends from the University of Miami Pretty cool little relic card there and then got a bunch of uh, Dolphins relics and autos thanks to uh all of you out there that sent me awesome dolphin stuff so let's go ahead and get into those here's a uh, Brian Hartline 
uh, mirror or certified red. This one's numbered at a 299. I believe I pulled this from a Fairfield box, um, which is pretty cool. This one's numbered out of 299. Brian Hartline, definitely a fan favorite down in Miami. Uh, then we got a, I don't remember who sent me this, maybe a TLM or Airtime. Um, somebody sent this to me and I can't remember, I think it might have been TLM. Century Materials out of 99, Devontae Parker uh, from National Treasures, which is awesome because National Treasures is a product that's well out of my price range. <laughs> we got a uh, Showcase Stitches rookie, Derek Hagan. This is a card I've had for a while, back when I collected pre-purge, uh, this Derek Hagan showcase stitches, never really did much in the NFL. Here's a Tedkin Jr. Upper Deck Rookie Jersey, another card that kind of survived the purge. Ted Ginn, one of the most contentious draft picks uh, the Dolphins ever made. <laughs> um, pretty much everybody wanted the Dolphins to pick Brady Quinn in that draft, and they went with Ted Ginn Jr. And they proceeded to go 1-15 that season. Of course, it wasn't all Ted Ginn's fault. But, uh, yeah. Here's a Jersey Kings. Ryan Tannehill. Of course, Ryan Tannehill currently with the Tennessee Titans and having great success with the Titans. Uh, this is a Studio Series Jersey Kings. This one is numbered 16 out of 25. This is a pack-pulled card. I pulled this last year out of a pack of Donruss, which is freaking awesome. It's always awesome to pull a PC hit out of just some random pack of score which is really awesome love that card uh this one was sent to me i believe by uh who sent me this oh yeah dfd sent me this that's right dfd sent me an awesome care package with some dolphin stuff in it now i remember dfd where you at dfd i miss your videos man I need you to 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 get back in the community hopefully everything's well with you out there uh, this one is 48 out of 50. This Mike Jacecki, awesome four-color patch. Ricky Stallions card. Absolutely love this card. Thank you very much, Drew, for sending this one my way. Uh, Mike Jacecki. Then we got a... Oops. A couple cards here. Uh, this is a Autry Denson jersey. And a J.J. Johnson jersey. It's pretty cool. double side authentic gave me these jerseys um very cool concept you don't see very often and it's not a super thick card so pretty cool how they did that with um two separate jersey swatches of two separate players and the card is not even that super thick just slightly thicker than a regular card and then we got a upper deck rookie jersey of patrick turner here from upper deck this is probably an event worn uh, let's see yeah event worn which means probably wore that at the rookie debut event. This one's pretty cool. It's a Mike Gillisley uh, Silhouettes. Nice little jumbo swatch on this one. This was numbered at 299 from Crown Royale. Mike Gillisley, he was, you know, a solid backup. Um, paid not any attention to the scotch tape I took off up there. But, uh, but yeah, it's just one of those players that, you know, wasn't a superstar, but was a good role player. Ended up uh, going to the Patriots, I think. Then we got one of my favorite Dolphins here, Cameron Wake from Spectra. This is just a sweet looking card. This card is just absolutely beautiful with the sheen on it, the design, the beast, the earthquake. Cameron Wake, this one's numbered out of 299. In my opinion, this guy belongs in the Dolphins honor roll. Um, great story, come out of Penn State, didn't get drafted, went to the Canadian Football League balled out for a couple years up there and then picked up by the Dolphins and had a really good NFL career. Alright, next up we got a uh, Tony Lippett. This is from Strata. This is an acetate card. It's pretty thick acetate. It's like, feels like glass almost. Uh, this one's numbered 38 out of 75. Tony Lippett autograph. Um, I don't know where Tony Lippett is at now. Played a couple seasons. Was a starter. For the most part at cornerback uh, played wide receiver in college and cornerback so but the Dolphins pretty much use them as a cornerback Tony Lippett and then we got a certified gamers uh, red this one's numbered out of 99 of Devontae Parker pretty cool card there Devontae Parker jersey red parallel 
and then we got a Topps Mayo. I think it's Topps Mayo, ain't it? Yeah, Mayo football from 2009. Ronnie Brown. When we drafted him, I think second overall. A couple years before that, uh, Ronnie Brown, and definitely the year that they broke out the Wildcat with Ronnie Brown was just a huge success. Of course, the league got onto it and. It wasn't very effective moving on from that, but him and Ricky Williams in the backfield was really awesome running that Wildcat with Ronnie Brown. Um, they'd pull Ricky in motion. Sometimes he'd hand it off to Ricky Williams. Sometimes he'd run it himself. And occasionally he'd even throw it, uh, which would always be a surprise. But yeah, really cool Ronnie Brown jersey there. And then we got old Check Down Chad. Check Down Chad Henney. Chad Henney's still in the league. Uh, as a backup, I think. Is he with the Chiefs? Uh, old Chad Henney. Uh, second round draft pick for the Dolphins. Uh, out of Michigan. And yeah, he, I mean, he was a okay quarterback. He wasn't the worst quarterback, but he also wasn't uh, the best. He had some big games, and then, you know, you were always waiting for him to, you know, to figure it out and break out and just had that. That starter, amazing year for the Dolphins, but it never, never materialized. Here's Jake Long. Jake Long, of course, the Dolphins took him first overall. After that 1-15 season, tackle out of Michigan. Uh, this is a rookie jersey of his from Upper Deck. He was a really solid left tackle. Very, very solid left tackle. Of course, uh, his longevity in the league didn't last but, you know, his first two years in the league, he was a really, really good left tackle. And then we got... This is an autograph of J.R. Tolver. J.R. Tolver. Uh, from Bowman's Best. Pretty cool design card there. Unfortunately, he signed off the sticker. Crazy looking auto, too. <laughs> Just looks like uh, hieroglyphics. But J.R. Tolver... From 2002 auto and finally the last Dolphins card we got here is a John Beck uh, Jersey freshman fabric here from Leaf certified 2002 John Beck this one's numbered out of 1499 1499 uh, pieces of material personally worn used by John Beck at 510 at the 2007 NFL players rookie premiere so another event worn Jersey there all right, let's move on to the Hall of Famers. Actually, a couple cards here I got over here that don't really fit my PC collection, um, but I got them either way. Like this one, uh, I'm a Heat fan. Of course, the casual NBA fan. Um, Miami Heat, this is a Goran Dragic. Uh, 15 out of 15, so a bookend here. Uh, Goran Dragic from, I don't even know what set this is. I don't even know what set that is. Because I don't even collect basketball. So whatever this GS is. Gold Standard Basketball is what it says at the bottom. But a really cool uh, prism here. 15 out of 15. I bought this off Deafness. And uh, got it for really, really cheap. So I don't even really collect basketball. But this was too good of a deal to pass up. And got me a Goran Dragic card. Um, also from a YouTube... Uh, purchase we got this 1993 flare my opinion the greatest set ever love me some flare sorry about the glare the glare on the flare but this is a 1993 flare Bo Jackson Jim Met 10 beautiful card here of Bo Jackson I don't collect Bo Jackson but this was from the olden times of BITG's breaks back when he was selling packs of, of uh, you know, I guess you could call it junk wax, but uh, overproduction wax era cards. He had flair, and yeah, I bought a few packs of that, and this was the best card to pull for that pack. And he asked me if I wanted to send it in for grading, and I was like, you know what, sure. So I sent him a few bucks for to send it in for grading for us. Of course, we waited a little while. Um, this is the first card I first card I've ever had sent in for grading on my own, even though I didn't actually go through the grading submission process. Bitg took care of that. Uh, but it came back at Jim Mint 10, and then this card, he sent it to me last year. I think he mailed it in February, January, the end of January, 
and I didn't get it until July. Yeah, it was stuck in the U.S. postal system for that long, thanks to COVID. All right, let's get to the Hall of Famer cards that I do not have in my binders. We got a Ken Griffey Jr. rated rookie. This one I didn't put in my binder. This one's been in a top loader since I pulled it from a pack last year. Um, many of you remember Danny from 12 Again Sports and Outdoors sent me an entire box of 89 Donruss. I had mentioned that I had never pulled a Griffey rookie in my entire life. Never, not once. Not an 89 Upper Deck, not an 89 Donruss, or an 89 Flair. N never had pulled a Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card, pack pulled. And I got my wish last year after uh, 12 Against Sports and Outdoors sent me the uh, that box. And yeah, that was a really awesome experience. Thank you again, Danny, for sending me that box. Uh, awesome, awesome chance to pull a pack fresh Ken Griffey Jr. rookie. Right, next up, we got one of those uh, retrospective medallion cards, Sandy Koufax. This one was sent to me by Joe Mansman. Uh, he's putting together the set, so if you have any extras of these, hit up Joe Mansman on YouTube. Um, he frequents a lot of the streams, so if you see him in one of the uh, streams, he is trying to build this complete set. This was a dupe that he sent me, Sandy Koufax. Uh, we got here just the top's big, Jim Rice. Of course, these are oversized cards and don't fit normal. Binder page sleeves. Uh, this one's a little thick, that's why I didn't have it in our binder. It's a, uh, I think it's triple threads or is it tributes? I think it's tributes. Um, Roberto Alomar. And then many of you have seen this car before. I pulled this from Allen and Ginter back in 2014. Steve Carlton, hand numbered, 7 out of 10. Awesome Allen and Ginter on card auto. Hand numbered 7 out of 10. And then we got uh, one of these 150 Greatest, Reggie Jackson. Really cool card there. I mean, how can you get cooler than that? Look at Reggie and his A's get up there. Sunglasses and all. Fro sticking out of the helmet. The epitome of cool. This card instantly became one of my favorite cards. Oops, sorry about the camera bump. Having issues uh, hitting my camera stand there. This was sent to me by Jeremy IPTTM. Definitely check him out if you have not checked him out. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I just can't get over that I won this. Uh, it is a Willie Mays 59 Tops autographed autographed Willie Mays. I just I can't believe I won this. This instantly became one of the top cards in my collection. And number 2 out of 10 Willie Mays. Uh, the seal's kind of peeling off up here, but this is an authentic 1959 Topps Willie Mays here. Still got the certification sticker on it um, from Topps. This came from 2004 Signature Edition Origins. Willie, beautiful, beautiful Willie Mays. Absolutely adore this card. Thank you, Jeremy, so much for offering this contest and a chance to win this card. And I can't believe I actually won this. Beautiful, beautiful card. Instantly became one of the top cards in my collection. Uh, this is a Topps uh, Historical Stitches, one of those uh, menu patches. Willie McCovey. And then we got a Bat Relic here. Instant Impact Cal Ripken Jr. This one is numbered out of 100. 60 or 86 out of 100. Cal Ripken Jr. Bat card. Pretty cool. We got a uh, Chasing History, Mariano Rivera with a pinstripe, ERA record. Uh, this is from 2012, 2013 Tops Chasing History. Pretty cool little Mariano relic there. Another uh, manufactured relic here, Al Kalon. 150 years of professional baseball. This is the 150 version, so it is numbered. 31 out of 150, so pretty cool little Al Kaline there. Manu Relic, another Manu Relic here, 150 years, this one's Christy Matthewson, Christy Matthewson, and then we got a couple thick cards here, this is from the Elite Series from Tops. these were inserts back in 2013 as well, uh, the Elite from Tops. these are thick cards, 
that we had inserted into packs, which I thought was pretty cool. Reggie Jackson and Bob Gibson here. Thicker cards, so I don't have them in the binders. Uh, this was a pretty cool uh, Manu Relic set. Cloth stickers, where they reprinted the rookie cards on a piece of cloth. Um, which is pretty cool. Ozzy Smith rookie here. Uh, from 79 Tops. Reprint on cloth, which is pretty cool. Tops had some pretty cool ideas for their Manu patches and stuff. This card feels like it weighs like 2 pounds. It's a... Uh, MLB debut coin uh, from what year did these come out? 2016. 2016 tops had these manu manufactured relics in it. Manu relics, I guess you could call them. This one of Tom Glavin. Got another Elite Series card here from Tops. Uh, Lou Gehrig. This is a thicker card face off with Al Leiter and Chipper Jones. Thicker card there. Pretty interesting design with the balls. Uh, I believe Joe Mansman sent me this card. Hoyt Wilhelm. Um, I don't know what year this is off the top of my head. I'm sure you uh, vintage guys out there can recognize this right off the bat. It's got a, it's a little beat up, but great, great vintage card here of a uh, Hall of Famer Hoyt. Well, um, of course, this card is a little bit oversized, so it will not fit in the binders. Uh, I got a few of these from a lot I bought on eBay. Uh, the Yankee Clipper 1941 streak. I think there's a card for each game of his hitting streak. Uh, these are from Playball Upper Deck. Pretty cool. They show the box score of every game of his 56 game hitting streak. It's pretty cool. And we got some of these Bowman reprints in here. From, I think these were from 89, so oversized cards here. It's Willie Mays and Ted Williams Bowman reprints. And I got some more Tops Big in here. Uh, Molitor, Nolan Ryan, Dave Winfield, Gary Carter, Ricky Henderson, all Hall of Famers, and Jim Rice. All from Tops Big. A lot of people do not like that set because they are. Uh, oversized, same thing with 89 Bowman. Oversized cards is a John Smoltz rookie card from 89 Bowman. Another 89 Bowman reprint. Uh, Whitey Ford. This card we won from Sports Card Talk Show. It is a Kirby Puckett Harmon Killebrew dual bat. So two Hall of Famers on here. Dual bat card out of 99. Beautiful card here from Immaculate, which is one of those sets that I cannot afford to buy. But a beautiful card there, two Hall of Famers from Immaculate. A couple more cards here and we'll be done. Here's another of those historical stitches of Laddy Daddy. And then another rookie retrospective card, Mr. John Smoltz. Rookie retrospective with the, of course, the uh, little rookie... I lost my train of thought there. I'm not going to go any further. <laughs> the last card is uh, Tom Seaver. This is a commemorative retired number patch. So Tom Terrific. Number 41, Tom Seaver. These were put in 2012 Tops. 2012 Tops Blasters. So these cool Manu relics from back then. Really love these things. Um, I don't mind these in uh, retail. Like... Like when they when they started putting manu relics in hobby boxes, I'm like, what are they doing? That does that shouldn't count as a hit, you know. A lot of times you get people pulling, you know, manu relics out of hobby boxes, and in my in my opinion, jersey cards shouldn't count as hits either. I just find jersey cards to be now, you know, kind of a you know embellished insert, I guess you can say. In my opinion, if you promise a hit in a box, it should be an autograph. Uh, you know. That should be your guaranteed hit. Not something like that. You know what I'm saying? Because single jer or single color jersey cards just I don't consider them hits. You know, if you have a relic as a hit, then it should have an autograph on it. Um, that's just my opinion. I think relics uh, might be going the way of the dodo. Hopefully, eventually, because yeah, they were a thing. But I mean, you know, back in the what late 90s is when they started doing relics in packs. And 
I think it's run its course. I mean, you're, you're talking about 20 years of relic cards, you know, being considered hits. And I just, I don't, you know, when you pull a relic, do you feel like you've pulled a hit? Let me know in the comments below. If you get a relic in a, in a pack, do you feel like you've got a hit? I mean, truly, do you feel like you got a hit? Like, especially if it's a guaranteed hit and it's a relic, not an autograph. Let me know if you feel disappointed in that. Because I just think all hits should be autographs. Uh, relics don't really do it. I mean, low-numbered relics, you know, that they add a bit of rarity to them. But un unnumbered relics just don't feel, uh, feel that special. I do like the manufactured relics in Blasters. Uh, they give Blasters a little bit of extra value. Uh, which I enjoy. So that is it, folks. We are done with my collection review from 2020. Thank you all for going on this journey with me. Uh, I know it was a bit drawn out, a bit longer than I expected, but that's just how much I collected, how much I gained in the past year or so, two years of collecting. It's been really awesome to to watch my collection expand. Uh, unfortunately, my space hasn't expanded, so. Um, yeah, it's going to take a little more, uh, work on my end to get stuff organized into binders. I got, I got to get me a couple of shelves to, um, to put up so I can, you know, start storing some more binders and stuff like that. Cause my little, I got like a bookshelf. That's like a, like a half bookshelf, uh, that ain't going to cut it for me as far as storage. But, uh, yeah, let me quit rambling. Remember you can only control two things, your thoughts and your actions. So stay positive. Give somebody a hug today and keep collecting and I'll catch you all later. Peace.